Dave, what more can you tell us about signings for the Lakers? Well, you know, they uh, got their work done early where they added Torian Prince, a versatile forward from uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves at the biannual exception, $4.5 million. And now the big news is Gabe Vincent. Uh, they have agreed to a three-year, $33 million deal with uh, – former Miami Heat product, obviously can shoot the ball, can run some point, um, a versatile offensive player. And this means that the Lakers have used up most of that money they had in the middle level exception. There's a little bit left. They can use it to maybe give a raise to a guy above the veteran minimum. But this is not the type of name that we heard going into this thing. It's certainly not a Bruce Brown right. or a player of that ilk. No, this means that Rob Palenka is doing his thing right now. And the Lakers right now, and I know it's early, they are winning in this free agency. They are winning right now. No way in hell you can't tell me adding Gabe Vincent and Torian Prince don't put them in a mix of things and, and, and adjust and address areas that needed to be addressed. Torian Prince, 3 and D guy, size, length, athleticism on the wing, tenacity, and Gabe Vincent. We saw what he did. Last year, he was consistently probably the second best player on the Miami Heat team that went to the finals. You, you damn near got two for one. Torian Prince shot 38% on threes last year for Minnesota. It was really solid for them. Gabe Vincent, you just said it, Perk. Tough as all hell. You know Gabe Vincent is not backing down, not shying away from any moment. I love what the Lakers are doing. And if my math is right, and it might not be, there's a lot of stuff going on, they can still, depending on if, a, a team comes out with the big offer for Austin Reeves. They should still be able to bring back Reeves and Hachimura <laughs> and D'Angelo Russell <laughs> and D'Angelo Russell Kirk, are you and okay? D'Angelo Russell no, I'm and not. stay under the luxury tax. It's possible. It's saying. possible. Or stay under the apron. I'm let's, not sure. The hard let's cap. let's hard double cap. check the hard that math. Our Bobby the Marks, luxury tax our Bobby <laughs> Marks <laughs> is standing <laughs> by. Bobby, fire up the machine. Let let's us go. know. What can the Lakers do now? I don't have a calculator. My calculator's on that desk there, so I'm going to have to do some math in my head we right now. We believe in you. Oh, I know. A lot of pressure right now. When you look at, certainly when they went out and they added, certainly Gabe Vincent right now, we'll put him in at $11 million, okay? And they went out and got Torian Prince at $4.5 million. We had Torian basically kind of at the, we're going to add him in there. Still under that luxury tax, as Zach said. And now we're going to put Austin Reeves in that 12, $12 million slot. That's good. We're under the tax. We're going to put him there. Still under that tax. And then we're going to put, let's put Rui in at about $14 million. Still under. And now we're going to go find D'Angelo Russell. Okay. And let's, oh, I don't know, Malika. We ding, did ding, it. Ding, ding. <laughs> Perk, I was you right. should My was see right. Kendrick Perkins. Uh, there he is. No, he is I'm, ready to get up and walk across the street no, to Crypto.com right now. I'm just saying, over the over the past couple years, Rob Palenka, I've given him a lot of heat. We all have. And since the trade deadline of last this past season, he has been showing up and showing out. And what the hell is the heat thinking? I thought... Gabe Vincent should have been top on their list of making sure he get back in the Heat uniform. Uh, Gabe Vincent's story, undrafted player, and the, to reach the level he did be a key playoff performer. Uh, as you mentioned, one of the most consistent players for one of the most consistent organizations. You know, it, when a team gets a player out of the Heat system, yeah. you know what you're getting. You're getting a professional. You're getting someone who takes care of their body, who takes care of all the things off the court that go into your performance on the court. Yeah, the Lakers should feel really good about this. Can you imagine them next to Braun? <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what Kendrick Perkins is doing right now. You need a cigarette, Perkins? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I don't need a cigarette. I don't need a cigarette. I might. <laughs> Can I just tell you what the Heat are doing? The Heat are at the tax before signing anybody, including Gabe Vincent. So this is this is a tax-related loss for the Heat. It's not it's not a quote unquote a mistake or whatever. I mean, you would like to see teams pay to keep their own guys, and Gabe Vincent was a huge Enormous. part of their team and their fun run to the finals. But the Heat with Butler, Bam, Lowry, Hero, Robinson, they're they're right at the tax before they do anything. Plus, you have to imagine they might be waiting. Thank you. Waiting, waiting. Yeah, they might to be, see they might if anyone 
up in a Pacific Northwest area Seattle. might become available from Seattle. <laughs> uh, from Seattle, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. We're going to stay back on the Lakers. We're not going to start doing the whole Dame dance again. Uh, no, no, no. I also have been very critical uh, of Rob Palinka. But since the deadline, what he has done has been very impressive. To be able to use picks, to be able to get players, to be able to build this roster up, that was the thing. We've been talking about adults and grown-ups. Well, there was about a year and a half there where the Lakers didn't have enough of them. And the tragedy of that is you're playing with one of the greatest players, if not the greatest player of all time. You just needed to surround him with competent veterans, and that's what they have done. Well, you also look at depth for Los Angeles because we've seen them do the, the Russell Westbrook deal where it didn't really work out. Russ has, has found a better situation. We'll see if he ends up staying uh, with the Clippers here, but they're able to now have a little bit more to go to, Dave. I mean, that was such a key to them having that post-trade deadline success last year. They go 18-6 and six over the period ending the regular season through the play-in round, the first two rounds of the playoff, because they had depth and they had players, as Perk mentioned, and, and RJ, toughness, tenacity on the defensive yep. end. So this is not a – Gabe Vincent brings excellent three-point shooting to this group, but he's not a one-dimensional specialist. He can play on both ends, and those are the type of guys that certainly Darvin Ham loves investing in. Well, if they bring back Reeves, which they will, if they bring back Russell, which is still very much on the table despite Vincent, and they have Vincent, there's a lot of ball handlers that LeBron can hand the offense to during the regular season and say, you guys run the show. Look, a lot of the Lakers' mistakes – dismantling the 2020 championship team mm -hmm. were wrapped up in one big transaction for Russell Westbrook that did not work. Other than letting Alex Caruso walk, which was a separate thing, the Lakers have undone almost yes. all of that damage yep. in sh relatively short order and built a team that is not dissimilar to the one that won the championship two years ago. But let me ask you a question. Okay, they got back Vanderbilt. If, if you're the Lakers with this Gabe Vincent signing, do you go out and you pursue D'Angelo Russell and, and make sure you bring him back or you make sure you bring back Dennis Schroeder? Because he's but still then, there. And to me, Dennis Schroeder seemed like a more valuable piece and a more reliable piece when it mattered the most. Braun trusted him more. Remember, Darvin Ham had to snatch him out of the lineup because he didn't deliver or wasn't showing up in that Denver series. So I'm saying that's a that's another it's a, conversation. It's a good name and a guy who they trusted to defend Steph Curry, who's not going anywhere either. Yeah, I, I think Dennis Schroeder is the one. Now, look, if you can bring back D'Angelo Russell and you want as much talent as possible. We've seen depth in Milwaukee. We've seen depth in Boston. We've seen depth in Denver. So you want as much depth as possible. If you can bring back a former all-star D'Angelo Russell that's still in his prime, if you can't, then I think Dennis Schroeder becomes the primary. I, just for what I see out there, they need a defense. Look, and, and Gabe Vincent is still a smaller guard. So Schroeder's a little bit bigger, bigger defender. I like that. So I want to bring Bobby Marks back into the conversation here because, Bobby, now that we see what Golden State is up to a little bit here, what else can they do? Well, we saw Draymond, certainly, and Draymond actually saved them a ton of money his, based on his opt-out and where his new number is going to come in. Look, at, it's, it's still high, right? It's still yeah. 100. But we had that at, what, like 237? So it's like a $60 million savings just for him coming in at that number. Now they have the veteran minimum exception. I think what you're going to see, Malika, is going out and targeting veteran players, certainly like Dario Saric. Go turn it back to when they built that championship team with veterans on that bench, players that can stretch the floor, big fours, put the ball in the basket here. Don't rely as much on your younger players here, but it's all about the veteran minimum exception right now for Golden State. Veteran minimum exception. Bobby Marks, thank you so much. So, Zach, let's, let's say it's Christmas. Let's say that you get to ask Santa for anything that you want for the Golden State Warriors to use there. What would you ask for? To use, a, to use my minimum contracts on? I've, I mean... We'll see. The minimum bin is usually pretty thin, and they don't have many options. I, I don't know who they're going to be able to get there. I love the Draymond deal for them, and I think really the offseason is more about the Chris Paul deal, bringing back Draymond, and it's time for Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga 
to really step into meaningful roles with the Warriors. And if that happens, then the minimum contracts maybe aren't as big as you think, as important as you think. Repeat what you just said again, Zach. Oh, no, here Moses. we go. No, I'm just saying. Moses. Repeat Moody, Moody Moses. Yeah, however you want to call it. Moody Moses, Moses Moody, and who? Jonathan, Jonathan Kaminga. It's time for them to do what? Step into actual, real, steady rotation roles. Yes, yes, yes. So you're talking to Jonathan Kaminga. Make sure we make no mistake. This isn't the Warriors. The Warriors are a championship I'm team. talking to everybody. That's what I'm saying. No, I'm, no, I'm no. talking to I'm Steve Kerr. No, I'm talking no, to Jonathan Kaminga. No, he just Kaminga. tries to make it seem like they got to play Kaminga. No, they don't. Kaminga's got to play well. That's my thing. So, if I had to pick one thing for the Golden State Warriors, I think they need some size. They do need some size. If you go back and look at how their championships were won, they had David West on top of Draymond. They had Andrew Bogut on top of Draymond. They had JaVel McGee. Right? You know what I'm saying? So, like, they had guys on their roster that Actually, excuse me, that was Lakers. I apologize. But they've had size on their roster. They need more size, especially when you're talking about Jokic, especially when you're talking about Anthony Davis, when you're talking about bigs, even, even uh, the Memphis Grizzlies. If, when they're healthy and it's Steven Adams and it's Jaron Jackson Jr. and it's Brandon Clark, they need more size. I understand they're shooting, but they, if you could pick something, find some size. Don't forget hey, Kevon Looney. That's what I yeah, want to say. But, but, Kavon, but, but, but what, what about Kevon Looney? Kevon Looney, they can't play Draymond and Kevon. Von Looney, you have two non-shooters. There was there were some issues there. That's why after he dominated in that first round, he, he dominated. Struggled. Off the bench. But he I, didn't dominate the two straight posts. I didn't. I didn't say that he wasn't an okay. elite player. I'm saying more size. They got all the shooting in the world. You got all the guards in the world. Add a little bit more size. You got wings. You got a lot of things. So, if there's one place, it's that. Kendrick, you said on our earlier show that their championship window depends on re-signing Draymond Green. Now they've done that. So window still wide open. That, that's y'all window for them. That's their window. Oh, you think it's closed? You think it's closed for Mark? I, I told you I, that already. I, I, didn't, didn't, Matter of fact, fact, since. Didn't that since, call you hold out? Didn't that call you that, out when you're on the podium? That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But answer this then. Who you got as your favorite no, winning the championship next year? I'm going to wait till all this is done. Uh, what about you? Can you. As, as of today, Denver. Okay, what about you? Denver, you so expect nobody the champs the until... Warriors, so don't act like I'm saying something. Don't pay attention to him. So don't act like I'm sitting up here saying that, something. The window, don't engage with the that. The window is is a little open at least. And, 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 and you know Draymond's, what? Draymond wants to... Zach. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.